You're the next door guy, right? She makes you the girl next door. I need a partner for my dance class. If I make you a drink, you come into my room and hustle with me. If you fix me a drink, I'll come in and clean your bathroom. Film stars don't die in Liverpool in theaters today. And at Betting, of course, plays the Oscar winning actress Gloria Graham. For more on that and other new releases, Richard Krause joins us, film critic and host of Pop Life. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. That's not a film title, that's a sentence. I know. But <laughs> Annette Benning and that voice. Oh, listen, Annette Benning should be thought of in the same breath, I think, as Meryl Streep. Absolutely. And for oh, some absolutely. reason, she isn't, and I don't know why. She's fantastic in this movie. She plays Gloria Graham, who was a real life actor. She won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor She's in The Bad and the Beautiful. She was in Oklahoma. She was in It's a Wonderful Life, movies that you've probably seen. Uh, and then she faded away. She, her career dried up in Hollywood and she went back to the stage. And so at the point that we meet her initially in this, as played by Annette Bening, uh, she's about to step on stage and uh, she falls ill. Cut to the backstory. Uh, she had been in, in England years before and met a young man played by Jamie Bell. They were sharing a rooming house and, uh, and they fall in love. They have a torrid affair that ends. Okay. And then she's back in the UK years later, uh, falls ill and can't think of anyone else to call. So she calls him. Wow. He brings her to Liverpool and she lives in, in, her, in his family's home and, you know, is, is nursed there. Very and much the aging actress story. Absolutely it is. And, and Annette Benning, the thing that's so brilliant about her in this is that she plays her as someone who is vain and very self-possessed and all that, but also very vulnerable. This is uh, a woman who was very, very ill and, and was able to um, sort of navigate the world until she wasn't. And that's the point at which the movie takes on a lot of poignancy. For me, it's four out of five stars. For me, this should have been nominated for Academy Awards, and it wasn't. And and uh, uh, next time you think of Annette Bening or you think of Meryl Streep, think of them on the same plane because they belong together. <laughs> I already do, actually. Okay, yeah. let's get to Maze Runner, the next in the series, uh, The Death Cure. Yeah. Do you have to see the first couple of Maze uh, Runners to, to get to I, The Death Cure? I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> I would not suggest you watch the first. The first one's okay. okay. The second one, not so good. And then the third one is the absolute epitome of what they call diminishing returns. God. The further away that you get from the source material, the worse the movies get. So The Maze Runner, I could tell you what it's about, but it doesn't really matter. I think most of us guess, yeah. get the gist of it. They're kind of locked or originally it, locked in a spot where they can't get out. Yeah, well, that's that's changed now. The, the, there is no maze in the, in the death cure. It's Thomas, the main character played by Dylan O'Brien. Uh, he has to uh, break into the last city because all the, the, the people of the last city are dying of a plague, uh, and his maze runners seem to be immune to it, so they're being harvested, and their blood may be used to find a cure for this disease. Uh, so he's got to break in and, and free them all. Sounds but, a little X-Men-ish to me. Well, it's a little X-Men-ish, uh, except not nearly as good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was that spate of movies, young adult movies like the Divergent series, you know, the Maze Runner that came out, and then the Hunger Games came through and sort of eclipsed them all, made a superstar out of Jennifer Lawrence. In this movie, uh, they want you to love these characters so much that the camera caresses their faces. <laughs> Even when they're not talking, there's long, soulful shots of them staring at one another. Except that when the bad stuff happens, and there's an action scene about every 10 minutes, like there is in these sure. large-scale uh, films like this, uh, you don't care. You don't care what happens to these people, and it's two hours and 20 minutes long. Imagine what else you could do with two hours and 20 minutes. I was going to say, it's funny, though, as you say, because you want to care about the characters. That's yep. why you're there. Yeah. Sometimes that just doesn't work. It, there's no connection here whatsoever. So it's a one out of five star movie for me. It felt to me like sitting in a theater for two hours and 20 minutes and watching like a post-apocalyptic guess ad with weapons <laughs> and, and, you know, artfully tousled hair. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Richard Krause, let's go to Hollow in the Land, though. I want to get to that before we have to let you go. A completely different uh, it is. film. Movie. This is a very small movie starring uh, Diana Agron. She used to be on Glee. She was mm -hmm. the cheerleader on Glee. Um, this not a is cheerleader in this movie. Not a cheerleader in this movie. She plays a small town woman uh, whose father is in jail, whose mother left him. She's raising her 17-year-old uh, brother. He's a bit of a hell raiser. When he gets arrested, she has to try 
try and prove his innocence. It sounds like the kind of thing we've seen before, and kind of we have, except that the characters here are, are pretty good. They're compelling. It's the story that doesn't really hold up. We don't really care about the procedural. The thriller aspects of it aren't really there, but the characters are good. So I gave it two and a half out of five stars. Thanks as always. Talk to you, you soon.